Hey friends, thank you guys for joining me on the sewing version. And in case you've not seen how this pattern was drafted, I would advise you to click out, go watch how I drafted out the pattern and then come join us on the sewing version. And if you're new, please do not forget to subscribe and also like while you're down there. And in case you want to keep seeing my video, please put on your notification bell. And you guys, let's go into the first thing we're going to be doing on the sewing version. Now the first thing we're going to do is draft out the zipper fly and I have my pattern paper here. The first thing I'll do is rule a starting line. So this is just to guide me in marking the length. So now I'm just going to place my tape from the starting line and then I'll mark the length of my zipper fly and I'll be using 8 inches for this. So please go ahead and confirm what kind of zip you're using and how long it is and that is what you're going to be marking on your pattern. So for me it's 8 inches and now from this down here, from the down of my pattern, I'm just going to mark 2 inches in. On the down of my pattern paper, I'm going in by 2 inches and I'm using a green marker for this. Please watch what I'm doing. I'm using a green marker and I'm marking 2 inches in. Now this is 2 inches and I'll go in by 2 inches again and this time around I'm going to use a blue marker for this and I'm marking another 2 inches in. And this is 2 inches and now the last um, but not the least I'm going to be marking another 2 inches in and I'm using a red pen for this, a red marker and I'm marking another 2 inches in. Now what I'm going to do now is at the base of this last 2 inches I just marked, I'm just going to go up by 1 inch and this is just going to help me create a curve. So now I have that 1 inch, I'm just going to go ahead and use my curve ruler to create a curve here. And this is going to be my fly piece B. So this is the fly piece B, the one that has a curve and this first 2 I marked here is going to be the fly piece A. So the 2 of them together mix up A and then this alone makes up B. So this is A and this is my fly piece B and you guys I'm going to cut this out so you understand what is happening. So I'm just going to cut the whole fly piece out of the pattern. And I'm just going to show you guys what I actually mean by A and B. So I'm going to be taking off the B out of the whole equation and you guys you get now this is the A and this is the B. So the A will be folded into two. We're just going to cut out one fabric and it's going to be folded into two like this. And then Y for the B we're going to be cutting out two separate fabrics and sew them together. So this is the B and this is the A. Let's go ahead and do this on the fabric okay. Now you guys remember all the patterns we cut out while drafting out our shorts. Let's go ahead and see how many pieces we need to cut out for each of them. So I have the front and the back pattern here. As you can see, this is the shape it's going to make when I sew in the crotch. But anyway, please go ahead and leave one inch round your pattern when you're cutting your pattern on your fabric, okay? Leave one inch or more than one inch. Now the first thing I'm just going to show you guys here is... Don't forget to notch your darts. Remember we have that on the pattern. Go ahead and notch that on the fabric. And just make this little little notches on the dart. So you know where to sew when you're ready to sew. And you guys this is my pocket. I left half inch allowance on the pocket. While cutting on the fabric. So this is 0 0.5. That is the allowance I left for the joining of the other fabric. That will make up the whole pocket. And right here I have um, 0 0.75 um, allowance around the whole pattern please leave one or more than 1.5 inch around your pattern okay i know i'm saying this because i actually later regret not leaving more so this is my back pattern here and as you can see i have notched my um that on the fabric i have my that notched on the fabric and this is my allowance around the pattern like i said please leave one inch or more than okay on your fabric okay please do that now the first thing we're going to do is sew the zipper fly and we're going to be doing this step by step okay. Now I have my fabrics here cut out like my pattern place on the fabric and it's already cut out. I have one piece for the fly piece 
A, but the fly piece B, this is how it looks. I went ahead to iron my interfacing already on the fabric. That is why you're seeing this part white. I have my interfacing. And you guys, this is how an interfacing looks. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, this is an interfacing. So please get one and iron this on the wrong side of your fabric. Now let's start sewing our fly piece B. Remember we have two pieces for the fly piece B and we're going to sew along the curve area like this to this point. So let's do this. We're going to be sewing this in by quarter an inch. And you guys, I'm just going to take this really gentle so everybody gets to understand what is happening. So in case this is your first time of making a fly piece, I got you okay. It's going to be step by step. So we're sewing along this curve area. And once we're done, I'm just going to go ahead and notch around the curve so that when I flip this to the right side, it just lay really flat. Okay, so go ahead and do this for me. So now I'm just going to go ahead and flip this to the right side and I will be ironing this. But before then, let's go ahead and um, sew the fly piece A. Remember, this is the B we just finished sewing. Now let's sew the A. So for the fly piece A, remember I have just one fabric and like I said, I already went ahead to iron my interfacing on the wrong side. So what we're going to do now is just fold this into two equal parts, just as I am doing. And we're just going to pick a side and sew like an edge and sew. So pick one side and just sew in by quarter an inch. That's what I'm doing. So go ahead and do the same. So once I'm done, I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna cut out this part a little bit, and then I'll flip this to the right side. So now I can take my fly piece A and my fly piece B and go iron and bring them back. So you see how flat it really looks. Okay, so let's just go iron. So now that I am done ironing my fly piece A and B, we're going to be working on the A first. So let me keep the B aside. This is the A. Now what we're going to be doing is um, bring in the zip you're going to be working with. Like I said, my own zip is 8 inches long. And I'm just going to place my zip like this on the edge, raw edge of the fly piece A. Now you can see that the top of the zip has the raw edge and the base has the close edge. So I'm pinning my zip at the raw edge of the side. And I'm just going to zip this down and I'll sew my zip by quarter an inch. You see where it is sitting, right? where i have the open edge on my fly piece a not the closed edge where i have the open edge that is where i placed my zip and i'm just sewing this by quarter an inch so once i'm done sewing um the next thing we're going to do is sew this fly piece a to the right side of the front piece okay the right leg of the front piece now this is the right leg of my front piece you can see r written here what i'll do at the crotch side that is where the fly piece is going to sit of course i'm just going to place my fly piece a with the zip i'm just going to place it right side facing the right side of my fabric now you can see that where i have the teeth of the zip is what i am placing on the right side of the right leg of my front piece and i'm sewing that exact spot i sewed in the zip the first time so that raw edge of the fly piece A, that is what I am sewing at the very close edge of my right leg. Just go ahead and look at what I'm doing. I'm sure you're going to understand. So once I'm done sewing by quarter an inch, this is what it looks like. I'm just going to go ahead and top stitch. So when you sew like that and you flip this back to the right side, you're just going to have this fly piece looking like this. So what you're just going to do is top stitch on the side that I am top stitching. Take your time. Don't rush it. Just look at what I'm doing. So once I'm done with this, I'm just going to go ahead and work on my left leg and the fly piece B. So we're going to sew the fly piece B to the left leg of the front piece. So this is the left leg. You can see the L on the fabric. And what I'll do now is place the raw edge, that's the rough edge of the fly piece B. I'm just going to place my uh, fly piece B on that raw edge. And I'm just sewing that edge by quarter an inch. So just see what I'm doing. I'm sewing by quarter an inch and I'm making sure that the rough edge of my fly piece is facing the up and where I have the close edge, where I have the curve is just down close to the crotch. And after sewing, 
this is what I have. Now the next move for me to do is I'm just going to fold this into the wrong side and then top stitch. So I'm just going to fold like this. See, if you need to iron this so it lays flat before you sew, please do that. But I'm just going to fold it in like this into the wrong side. Now I'll go ahead and top stitch. So after stop stitching, the next thing we're going to do is place the left leg of the front piece on the right leg. Okay, that means we're going to be placing the fly piece A and the fly piece B together. That is what is going to happen now. So this is my right leg and it has the fly piece A. And this is my left leg and it has the fly piece B. I'm just going to place this. I'll place the fly piece B on the fly piece A. Making sure that my B covers my A by half an inch. So I'm just going to place it like this. And I will make sure I have half an inch covering the zip. And I'm just going to pin this before I sew. So you can see that half an inch is covering the zip. Before you can see my zip, you just see half an inch first. I'm just going to confirm this from the from this side, from the wrong side. So you can see that the, when I do that, I'm just going to have the zip sitting on the fly piece B. So, so to be sure, I'm just going to pin this first. So it's, my fly piece B is covering the A by half an inch. And I'm just going to flip this back to the side. And you can see that the zip now is sitting on the fly piece B. And I'm just going to follow that line and sew. So see the zip sitting on the B. And I'm just going to sew the zip in. If you don't have a zipper foot, you can just do what I'm doing. Just take your time and follow the teeth of your zip. You can see the line of the teeth of your zip. Follow the line. If you have a zipper foot, please use that so you get an accurate sewing, okay? So now I am done. So when I flip this back, um, this is what it looks like. I took off my pins already off the camera. I'm so sorry. But this is what it looks like. And now we're just going to go ahead and sew the crotch together by a quarter an inch. So you're supposed to sew the crotch together. Please, you guys, I'm trying to achieve something that I don't have any raw edges showing on the wrong side or the right side. So what I'll do first is I'll sew by quarter an inch on the right side. I'm sewing the crotch part. Please, this is optional. You can just go ahead and sew your crotch on the wrong side. But what I'll do first is sew on the right side by quarter an inch. And then I'll flip it back to the wrong side and so and after doing this you guys are just gonna see that um the the way my um shot is gonna look when I'm done is just going to be all part is just gonna look like I weaved the whole fabric but this is just a trick I learned and I just I just decided to do that on the shirt okay I wanted it to look like a ready-made right now I'm sewing on the wrong side I just sewed quarter an inch on the right side and then I just flip it back to the wrong side and sew by quarter an inch again, making sure I cover up the stitches on the right side, okay? This is what it's going to look like when I'm done. It's just going to be seamless at the back and on the front. When I mean seamless, it's just no raw edges. Now, the next thing we're going to do is separate the fly piece, okay? Separate the fly piece A from the B because we're going to be sewing along the curve we have on the fly piece B. I would we don't want the fly piece A to be cut in that sewing. So I'm just pinning my fly piece A away and I'm just going to sew on this curve. But I'll be doing this on the right side of the fabric. Okay. So now I'm just going to follow the curve. So this is where the curve starts from. I'm just going to stop stitch on the curve. or make sure I use my hand to follow the line. So please make sure you separate them. You separate your fly piece A from your B. So when you're sewing the B, you're top stitching like this on the B. It doesn't affect the A. Okay, separate them. So right now, I'm just following the curve. And once I'm done, I'll show you guys how it looks. And this is how you basically sew your zipper fly. Okay, it's really easy. I hope this explanation is actually helpful to someone. Please let me know in the comment section what you think. I'm just going to take the pins off. And you guys, this is how it looks. We're done with the zipper fly. We're just going to move on to the next stage. And the next stage is for us to sew in our darts. So, yeah, remember we notched the darts already. So, remember you notched your darts. What I'll do is sew in my own darts. I'm sewing in the darts. And before I do that, I'll use my tape to confirm 
the length of my dart. The length of my dart is supposed to be 5 inches. I'm just going to confirm the point. You can see me indicating that. And I'm just going to sew in my dart. I'm going to do this on the front piece and the, on the back piece. This is my front piece and the dart sewn and the zipper fly sewn. The next thing is for us to work on the pocket. Okay. So drafting on the pocket. The pocket is really very simple to draft out. Just cut out a pattern paper. For me, the width of my pattern paper is going to be 7 inches. So I'm just going to indicate that. And you guys note that my pattern paper is folded into two. So folded into two, I get seven inches. When I open it wide, I get 14 inches. Okay. So this is seven inches folded into two. And the length can be anything you want. It can be 10, 11, 12. It's up to you. Depend on the length of your shirt. So for me, the length of my pocket is going to be 10 inches. And what I'll do now is I'll open my pattern paper up like this. I'll pick a side. I'll mark two inches in from the open edge. And now I'm just going to mark 6 inches down. I'll use a curve ruler to connect both points together. What I just did is create that same curve we created on the front piece for the pockets. I'm creating that same curve and I'm just going to go ahead and cut this out. And this is how you create your packet. You can actually do this directly on the fabric. But I just decided to do this on the pattern so you just understand what is happening. Okay, so at this point you can decide to make your um pocket curvy any shape you want at the base you can decide to do that but me i decided to do my curvy later that was off the camera but you guys are going to be seeing this is the pocket fabric cut out already i have two here because we have two sides so i have two fabrics here and i'm just going to go ahead and join my pockets to the front piece so this is the part that is going to be sitting on this side of the shorts and I'm placing this, the pocket fabric right side facing the right side of my front piece. And I'm just going to sew by quarter an inch. So I'm sewing by quarter an inch. And remember I placed the fabric right side. That's the good side of the fa um, pocket fabric facing the good side of the front piece fabric. Okay. And once I am done, this is how it's going to be looking at last. So we have to iron this in with hemming gum and that is what we're going to be doing next ironing so um i have my hemming gum here i'm just going to place this in that part i just finished sewing that's half an inch i just finished sewing i'll place my hemming gum and then i'll use my hot iron at a reasonable heat i'm just going to iron this why i'm doing this is i don't want to see the seam on the pocket now most people go ahead to top stitch this part but this is what I like doing. So if you don't want to do this, you can just top stitch. After sewing, you flip it and you top stitch. And um, this is what you're supposed to get at last. Okay. Now I'm going to be sewing my pocket in. Um, I'll be sewing by quarter an inch on the base like this. side. But what I'm doing right now is sewing on the right side. So when I flip it to the wrong side to be like how it's supposed to look, I have like a clean finish, no raw edges. Okay, that is why I'm doing this. Remember, I'm not going to be weaving this. That is why I'm just doing all these excess or extra things I'm doing, okay? So now I'm just going to flip it to how it's supposed to look. And you can see how it looks here. It looks seamless, like no raw edges. And what I'll do now is I'll make sure I place the pockets um, how it is supposed to be. And then I'll just sew on the top here. So the pocket just sits properly, okay? So it doesn't move. And yes, I am done. So this is my front piece with the zipper fly attached, the dart sewn and the pockets attached. So now let's work on the back piece. Now this is my back piece and for the back piece you're supposed to have two pieces also, right? So what we're going to do is sew along the L shape where we have the crotch from the waist to the crotch. But me, like I said, I'm going to be sewing first from the right side. I'm just going to sew by quarter an inch before I flip to the wrong side and so okay why because i'm trying to get a a clean finish where i don't have any raw edges to weave okay so once i was done sewing by quarter an inch i'm just trimming up any excess so when i flip to the wrong side and sew so that i don't have any fabric poaching or picking out of the right side okay you guys will get to understand when i'm done so i'm just going to go ahead and stitch how i was supposed to stitch on the wrong side and I'm still following that same um, L shape. That's the crotch to the waist. And this is how it looks. You guys, I already sewn in my dart. My dart is already sewn in. So remember to sew in your dart. And this is how your back piece is supposed to look. Now we're going to be sewing the front and the back piece together. So that's the next step. This is my back piece. 
and this is the front piece and we're going to be sewing the sides by half an inch half an inch but me i'm going to be sewing from the right side first because i'm trying to get this whole finish like i've been explaining this from the beginning of the video i'm trying to get this whole finish where everything just look clean okay so that's why i'm sewing from the right side this is optional please don't do this if you do not leave the allowance for it okay so after sewing from the right side i'm just going to trim off the excess and then i'll flip to the wrong side and sew this how i was actually supposed to sew it and yeah so we're joining the front and the back piece together and right now we're just sewing in the sides once we're done sewing in the sides we're going to go ahead and sew the crotch now you guys um i'm going to be doing another video where i show you guys a proper way to attach the shirts like i'm just trying all these things because i actually want to get like a very very good fit for my pants or my shorts okay so this is the first trier and this came out a little bit okay um this video is just dedicated to the back and once we're done with this whole process we're going to be working on the front so we can get the perfect fit so after getting the perfect fit for the back we're going to work on the front and also work on the band and every other thing we need to work on so when we start creating our pants different type of pants boot cords straight cords we're just going to be getting the perfect fit for our pants okay and here i am done sewing from the wrong side i'm just trimming and this is how it looks you guys we have made it to the almost end of this video let's go ahead and work on the band so yeah we're going to be creating the band and um i've already gone ahead to cut out the fabric for the band and the width for me is my round waist plus extra five inches and then the length of my band is just five inches so what i'll be doing is i already iron in my interfacing on the fabric and what i'll do is fold in half an inch on the top of the band or you can cut this the sides i'm just folding in half an inch and then i'll fold in half an inch on this side too. So I'm folding in by half an inch on the base also after folding in on the top and I'm folding in on the base. And because I have my interfacing on this fabric, you can see that it's actually just respecting itself and just folding flat. Like no excuses. So once I was done um, folding in by half an inch on the top and on the base, I'm just going to fold this to two equal parts. So I folded the band to two equal parts and I'm just going to iron this with my hot iron. And this is how I create the band. Now, you guys, there is an updated way to create a band that actually fits. And you guys, not until I was done attaching the band to my shorts that I found out that it doesn't really fit. Like, the band didn't really fit me how I wanted it to fit. So, we're going to be doing the adjustment on the next um, video on the quest for us to get the perfect fit for our pants, okay? So, right now, this is how I attach my band. I'm just going to sew from the wrong side and I'm sewing by the first half an inch. I'll place the band like this on the wrong side of the fabric and I'll make sure I bring out like half an inch out before I start sewing like I'll leave half an inch then I'll place the band um, continue from after the half an inch and then I'll just keep sewing and once I was done I'll flip this like this to the right side and then I'll trim off the excess leaving half an inch before I trim off so I'll trim off and leave half an inch excess and then now I can go ahead and fold this back to the wrong side. What I'm trying to do now is sew in the edges of the band. So the edges of the band needs to look very clean. So I'm just going to sew by that half an inch I left. I'll just fold this in from the wrong side. I'll sew this by half an inch and then I'll flip it back to the right side and then top stitch on the right side of the shirt. Okay, you guys understand what I'm doing, right? So now I'm just flipping it back to the right side. I'll use my scissors to make this point C and then now see how it's going to work out. You can see that the whole thing just um, folded in by itself after I was done closing in the edges. And now I can top stitch my band on the right side of my shorts. That's the right side of the fabric of the shorts. And you guys, we are almost at the end. Once we are done with the band, we are going to go ahead and hem the base. Like I said, I'm going to definitely be bringing the adjustment video. You guys will have to get the right um everything for this shirt we have to get the right band we have to get the right front piece we have to get the right back piece so now we have gotten the right back piece we're going to be working on the front soon and then we're going to work on the band and yes you guys we're going to be getting the right fit for our shorts so that when we create our pants like i've said or like i've been saying when we create our band we're going to be getting the proper fit for our pants so what I'm doing now is just hemming in the base of the shorts. And what I did first was hem it in 
by sewing by half an inch and then once i was done i used my hemming gum to fold this again and you can see that this is just going to help the base of my shorts look clean so you guys we have come to the end of this particular video i'm going to bring in another one like um let's say a part b where we do the adjustment and we just find out what is wrong with the pattern and the sewing and you guys thank you guys for watching i really love you guys um i'll be seeing you guys on my next video love and lights to you bye for now